All right, welcome back to Casino Guitars. If you've been watching the channel, you've been seeing some videos where Baxter's talked through some, some of his personal sort of stash of instruments. Uh, so we thought we would put a few of mine in there too. They don't normally hang on the back wall like Baxter's, um, but we, we mention mine occasionally. And if you watch my channel at all, you might have seen them. Um, this is my ES-335. It's a 2013, uh, it was a special run, 59 reissues, made in Memphis. They all have this sort of blistered maple top. I don't know how well you can see that on camera. Hopefully it comes across well, but really gorgeous finish. And I'm not normally the biggest fan of natural in 335s, but this one, I just really loved. And there's a cool story. It marked a pretty cool milestone for me um, as a guitar player. Uh, so, you know, during during lockdown last year, um, I had a chance to go play at the Ryman Auditorium. Uh, and if you don't know about the Ryman, look it up. It's a really amazing venue. Uh, the mother church of, of country music in Nashville, obviously. Um, and definitely one of my bucket list venues that I, I wanted to play. Uh, there's a guy that I play, play with pretty often named Robbie Cummings. Um, and there was a sort of a night, they were going to do in two nights, I think, 48 hours of sort of um, gospel music at, at the Ryman, uh, the, Ryman, the Ryman Auditorium. Um, and this guy, Robbie, um, has a connection to um, Ricky Skaggs. My brain went blank. <laughs> if you're not familiar with Ricky Skaggs, he, he's a legend, fantastic songwriter, fantastic player, mandolin player, guitar player. Um, sort of a country music bluegrass legend. So Ricky Skaggs invited Robbie to come be a part of this thing. Robbie called me and asked if I'd like to come play. And I said, absolutely. It was live streamed. Um, so not, you know, it wasn't like playing the rhyme in, in normal times where it's, it's full of people. But still, just an amazing experience to be on that stage and to play music uh, with friends. Uh, but anyways, when I found out I was going to do that, a good friend of mine and a good friend of the shops who, who has lots of cool guitars. He, he just happened to be in. He said, man, that's great that you're going to get to play the Ryman. If there's anything that I have that you'd like to borrow and to go play, um, take it. <laughs> and then he texts me a picture later of all these guitars. And most of them I, you know, I knew about and had played. This one in particular, I had played and loved it, and I love 335s, and I was sort of in a, you know, a Gibson mode, was on the hunt for, for some sort of Gibson, Les Paul 335, something. Um, so anyways, I said, man, you know, if you are serious, I'd love to take your 335. And he said, absolutely, in fact, he, he that night, I think, he uh, brought it to me at, at a little random private gig I was playing at a swimming pool, dropped it off and said, you know, this way, you can get used to it for a month or so, take it, play it, play it on the gig. So I did. So I played this guitar on stage at the Ryman in Nashville, um, which was a, a big thing for me. And I was like, man, I, I love this guitar. It feels great. Like I said, it's a 59 reissue. It's got this cool blister top. Uh, there's a whole thing about that. They'd been saving this wood um, to do that special run at Gibson. Uh, in fact, there is a sort of a NAM video where they go through these, and I think this guitar, this actual guitar, is on that video, which is really cool. Uh, so anyways, get back from NAM, return the guitar, missed it horribly, uh, and then one day, my friend texts and says, hey, I, I know you really bonded with that 335, and, and I didn't think he would ever part with it. He said, you know, hey, I, you know, I, I'm thinking about letting it go, think you bonded with it more than I did, would you like to buy it? And my first, my initial response was, oh yeah, I really would, but I'm not sure that I can, can buy that right now. But just out of curiosity, so he, I mean, a stupid deal and made it possible for me to buy this 335 from him. And I, I have loved it. I haven't got to gig a ton with it since then. Gigs are just starting to come back sort of in, in full force. So be on the lookout. Uh, in videos and things to, to see this. I think we're gonna play it here in a second, let you see um, or hear what it sounds like. Uh, 
but yeah, just a, it's a great neck. The guy who had it actually had this neck reshaped to feel more like a 59. Sometimes I hear people say things like that and I'm kind of like, oh, I probably should have left it alone. But this one, I played it before and after and the neck is, is pretty magical, the neck carved now. So this is one of those guitars I can see hanging on to forever. Uh, and I think, you know, as a guitar player, the longer you, you, you play, maybe the older you get, or at least for me, the more I start thinking about buying things that I want to hang on to, that they're sort of heirloom type instruments. Hopefully one of my kids will, will want this and play it one day. So we'll see. Um, but anyways, tone, tone clips coming up. Uh, hit me up with any questions in the comments. Hope you enjoyed the story. Uh, hit like and subscribe as always if you haven't already. Uh, more videos like this are coming out. More chatty things with, with me and Baxter. Uh, hit the bell so you don't miss them. Uh, as always, thanks so much for hanging out with us. Have a great week. I'll see you.